Warzone Season 4 has just gone live and my god is it a huge update. Not only do we have new guns, a new map, various changes to Caldera but a bunch of other changes as well. So without any further ado let's jump straight into it. We've got the limited event the Mercenaries of Fortune where as per usual if you complete a challenge you get a reward for it. It's never anything too exciting. You get camos on occasion or maybe reticles or charms or things like that. They don't ever tend to be anything too exciting but you can see them on screen now. Looking at the new modes that they've introduced, we've got Golden Plunder, which just slightly alters Blood Money, so basically another version of Plunder. The player count has increased up to 120 players. Players drop more cash upon death. The cash required for victory has increased to 5 million, but they've added something very small in the fact that you can visit a malfunctioning ATM to earn additional cash. And on top of that, this is across Caldera in general. You've got various bunkers across the map where you need to get a golden key card to gain access to them. Now looking at fortunes keep resurgence this is basically just rebirth island resurgence but for fortunes keep so the new map and now let's look at the thing that most people are probably really excited for fortunes keep it's a brand new map to alternate with rebirth island so you've got a bit of variation when playing these two maps overall it looks quite interesting quite a lot of verticality in the map but as you can see on screen now it's really interesting and I can't wait to try it out. There are some brand new features for that map as well. So mercenary cash extraction. So that's a new public event. This is basically AI units will attempt to airlift cash out of the map. So players can just choose to intercept this or just leave them to it. And I guess if you intercept them, you're going to get some cash. And a new contract on Fortunes Keep as well. That's black market supply run. Very similar to a supply run. The contract will require players to track down the black market buy station before a timer expires. The black market buy station gives you access to things such as sequencer grenades, nebula 5 minigun, foresight, specialist bonus or one of several classified weapons. And then just as mentioned within that there's a new grenade called the sequencer grenade. This is only available within Fortune Keep. This tactical grenade applies a visual distortion effect with floating red numbers on a victim screen as well as an auditory debuff. Now let's look at the major Caldera changes as well. So looking at all the changes they've done into Caldera they've completely reduce the amount of foliage across the map so the amount of bushes and trees and things like this by 50 percent so quite drastically actually and on top of this they've added a load of micro pois on top of this they've also added storage town back into the game so that's the place from Verdansk that everyone seemed to quite like especially it was a hot drop during plunder games to farm kills it'd be really interesting to see if that kind of picks up the same reputation going forwards but apparently it's slightly altered from what we've seen at Verdansk to top this off they have added the fighter planes back into the game so it'd be interesting to see how they are i hope that they're not overpowered like they were when they first released so we'll see how they get on they have also said that they're going to add the weapon trade stations into caldera but that's going to be later on in season not sure how i feel about that i feel like it's a little bit gimmicky but hey we'll see now moving on to the gameplay section they've added various new gameplay features the first and most notable one i guess you could say is the armored suv this is basically the suv that we've all seen around to date but it's armored and has a turret on the roof this can be required as a reward for the sabotage contract so it's not saying if it's replacing the armored truck but i would imagine it's you either get one or the other going forwards and then moving on to the emp grenade this is a non-lethal tactical grenade designed primarily to counter vehicle play it's going to deactivate a vehicle's engine for 10 seconds and then it also disrupts any enemy electronics and removes the hud from players for about six seconds and as previously mentioned they've added the broken atms to the game now these can be interacted with these basically just spew out cash over time so quite interesting and then one really really interesting thing i think they've added is a portable redeployed balloon now i thought the redeploy balloons gave the game such a breath of fresh air so it's going to be really interesting to see how much these really impact things going forwards because sometimes you can be caught out in quite difficult situations so i can only imagine this is going to help the general mobility and it'll make the game less punishing as well when you get caught out in those bad situations so you can just sort of zip line away hopefully now moving on to the quality of life changes that they've added into Warzone. So they've updated the loadout crate for PC players. So basically instead of going into the middle of the screen when you open it up with your mouse as in which loadout it's going to select, it's always going to end up at the top. So this is going to be quite useful going forwards. Hopefully we'll just make grabbing your loadout that much quicker. They've updated the gas mask animation. 
they've really been going to town on the gas masks and actually making them more enjoyable to have. The brake animation will no longer interrupt parachuting whilst falling, which is a good update. And then looking at the buy station, they've added an option in the in-game settings to allow players to enable the ability to remain in the buy station menu to allow them to make multiple purchases without it closing out. So basically you don't need to re-enter into the buy station loads and loads over and over, and over again when you want to buy multiple items. You can literally just go in, buy every single item and then quit out. But that is something that you need to go away into your settings and enable. I know it's something I'm going to be doing, but it might not be for everyone. Deployable buy stations will also live for longer in the gas just to make them a bit more consistent with the in-world buy stations. The fire cell public event self revives will now actually have a cost to them, which for a long time to be honest, to be able to get a free self revive when it's been the fire cell, I think that's been a little bit overpowered. So it's nice to see that being nerfed a little bit. And then loadout drops will also also have a discount on them but it doesn't say how much and a good quality of life change here the out bounds timer has been increased to 10 seconds up from five seconds which is a really good update in all basically it means especially with the rocks on the outskirts of the map sometimes you just dip into it by accident and then you feel very rushed with five seconds so 10 seconds is going to come quite welcome especially for newer players out there in the gulag they've finally done it guys why it's taken them what is it two and a half years of warzone being out spectators now have muted footsteps for people in the gulag why that's taken two and a half years i'll never know but that's what everyone's been screaming out for so we can actually listen out to our enemies going forwards as opposed to the people running around above us and they've done a slight update to the redeploy positioning uh so if you've ever noticed sometimes when you've won your gulag it spawns you the other side of the map to your loadout or your teammates that should just happen less or not at all anymore going forwards they've added to the ground loop perks that you can find so you can find ghost combat scout double time cold-blooded and amped going forwards so that's going to be really interesting not too keen on ghost being on there because i actually prefer the game now no one's really running it it just makes the game more fluid and less campers or at least if there are campers you know they're there whereas yeah it might encourage a little bit more but it probably shouldn't do too much They've also buffed battle hardens, so stun and flash resistance is up to 70% from 40%, so that's pretty huge. But I feel like they should probably do that in the game in general, because I think they're ridiculous anyway. And then scavenger, you get an additional $500 with each scavenger pouch upon killing someone. And then on hardline, it provides a 25% discount on all buy station items, including loadout drop markers, which is a good quality of life change going forward. So if you're in a squad of four, maybe get someone to run hardline and then they're just able to buy multiple items for the whole team and then on that second loadout you know they can go to whatever perk they want so it's a good quality of life change that one and now looking at the tactical equipment the snapshot grenade radius has been decreased to 22 meters from 27.4 which yeah fair enough it was pretty strong anyway so i don't think you're going to find too many people moaning about that change going forwards and now looking at the new weapons you've got the ugm-8 light machine gun which is a high fire rate mobile lmg that creates that excels at creating suppressing fire and pushing enemy positions so i'd presume that means it's got lots of recoil which isn't very useful so we'll see how that one pans out and now looking at the macro 5 submachine gun a high mobility submachine gun accurate from the hip and excellent at close range stopping power so basically we've got another hip fire gun which i quite like because i suck at close range fights they've also added the new weapon unlock challenges for the ones added last season and now let's take a look at the nerfs and buffs to all the weapons here they've buffed the nz41 for some reason i mean it was pretty dominant as it was but hey there we go they've also kind of nerfed and buffed the bar a lot so it'd be interesting to see how that one goes out to be honest i feel like that probably should have been the case on the nz41 and the bar receiving more buffs than nerfs but hey we'll see how that one goes and the stg44 has been nerfed overall with its damage being down bullet velocity down and various just other changes alongside sort of recoil control and things like that and now let's move on to the second load of assault rifles that they've buffed and or nerfed the kgm40 has been buffed overall with its bullet velocity damage range and damage in general has been increased so that's going to be quite interesting because that was a solid gun anyway its damage was just a little bit shy so let's hopefully see that that brings it a little bit more into the meta and then the itra burst has been buffed as well with the bullet velocity being buffed and then the upper torso damage multiplier being increased as well but ultimately that gun still isn't great because if you miss one shot i think it is in that burst it ridiculously increases the time to kill to the point where it's totally unusable the ffar they've buffed it as well so max damage range has been increased and 
then the Nikita AVT has been buffed overall as well, bar some reload quickness penalty being changed. And then the AK-47 has been slightly nerfed. It's in the wrong color here. Yes, I do agree. Basically, its recoil control has been nerfed a little bit. So it's a little bit harder to control the gun because they still feel it's a little bit overpowered, which I agree with. And then the Vargo 52, not sure where they've done this, maybe because it's fallen off a little bit, is they've kind of reversed a couple of the changes they've made previously. So it's got less recoil to make it easier to control. And now looking at the AS-44, They've overall changed a lot of the recoil. Yeah, I think that could be really interesting going forwards. Its recoil control is a lot better now by the looks of it, around 25 to 30% in a lot of cases, some less than some other. So that's going to be really interesting. And then bullet velocity and damage range as well. It's been increased on various attachments. Now looking at the Cooper Carbine, its damage has been increased ever so slightly. But to be honest, I feel like the Cooper was in a really good place, even though no one was using it. <laughs> but it was just that zero recoil weapon of choice that for new players was a great option so maybe they just needed to change the unlock challenge for it because that's probably the reason why no one was using it and now moving on to the nerfs and buffs for the lmg and marksman guns for the whitley it has been buffed with its max damage being increased but the recoil was the issue on that gun so it's not going to overly change anything too much here the dp27 now this is actually a huge change it's bullet velocity has been buffed this gun was actually really really viable it was very similar to the nz41 it just struggled at range and you often had to aim ahead of your opponents so having an almost 10% bullet velocity increase here I can imagine it's going to make it quite popular going forward so be prepared to start seeing the DP27 start floating around the map a lot more. The Bren's also been buffed ever so slightly with bullet velocity, same with the Type 11, and the AMP63 has been nerfed by some slight max damage change increased up to 32 up from 31 but the rest of it the min and mid damages have all been nerfed and now looking at the mg42 that's been buffed and nerfed ever so slightly the ads time has been nerfed ever so slightly which is fine it's an lmg it shouldn't be overly snappy but its damage range min and max damage has been slightly buffed making times to kill a little bit more consistent but overall it needs a damage buff more so than anything like that so don't expect to see it much out there and then the rat pistol the a certain barrel on it has been buffed to be honest i think the rat's quite a decent pistol but it's time to kill it's just so much slower than your standard starting pistol that no one's going to use it still going forwards and then the M1 Garand has been buffed ever so slightly. Upper torso damage and neck damage multipliers have been increased. Again, I mean, unless you're going to go with DMR zone, like we saw in the Cold War integration, then we're just not going to see any marksman rifle come into the forefront. So don't expect to see any of these floating around. They've had the same changes to the SVT-40 and the fact that lower torso and extremities damage multiplier have been increased. Both the sh And both the crossbows, both the Modern Warfare and the Cold War crossbows have had their bullet velocity increased. And then Diamati has been nerfed as well again. Again, really aiming to get rid of that gun at this point in time. But the max damage has been decreased and the mid damage too. And now moving on to the SMGs. We're going to see a lot of changes as you can see on screen. So the Arma Guerra has been nerfed and buffed, nerfed and buffed, nerfed and buffed all across the things. You're going to have to pause it to run through it. But overall, it looks like a nerf in total. But it wasn't an overly popular gun anyway. So I don't I don't know why they've done this. Maybe it's a bit proactive. And the H4 Blixen, they've nerfed it ever so slightly, mainly on the mid-range stuff, just to make it stop being so dominant like it is at the moment. And then the Mac 10 has been buffed. I like that. The Mac 10's a great weapon, so maybe you see it a little bit more. Basically, its max damage range has been increased, and headshot multiplier, and then min damage as well, making it a bit more consistent with times to kill. And then the Type 100 has been nerfed, with its recoil and lower extremities damage being nerfed. And then looking at the Owen gun that's been nerfed overall by the max damage range has been increased ever so slightly but everything else its damage has been nerfed in total I guess that's to stop it becoming the dominant weapon now that the H4 Blixen has been nerfed so it'll be interesting and now moving on to the PPSH 41 the Vanguard version the recoil intensity has been slightly decreased bullet velocity has been increased as well on that gun and then the Sten has been buffed and slightly nerfed with its max damage range or sorry mid damage range so that's interesting and then the whale gun has been nerfed ever so slightly that's lower extremities damage multiplier being nerfed making it a little bit less consistent with times to kill and now moving on to the snipers all the ones on the left you can see here have had their flinch reduced which is about time considering they are utterly useless so i mean that's not going to do a lot anyway but the flinch reduction is a good thing they should probably do that across all the snipers to be fair because now they have been pigeonholed in 
into very specific situations. They shouldn't be targeted as hard, I guess you could say. And then the Gorenko anti-tank rifle has been buffed ever so slightly. Overall, I don't think this is going to make much of a change, if I'm honest with you. So, yeah, there you go. The free and line rifle has also been buffed overall. The ADS transition speed so basically aimed out sight a little bit quicker across all the attachments. But my issue with the gun was its horrendous weapon sway. So I don't think it's going to become that useful either going forwards. Going back a little bit here, the Cold War Org has had its max and min damage increased. That's going to be interesting. I don't think it's going to bring it back to the heyday that it had, but I really enjoyed that meta. So hey. And now looking at nerfs and buffs to various attachments, the MX silencer has been nerfed ever so slightly by recoil control it should bring a little bit of difference between that and the other silencer so hey be interesting then if you look at all the other muzzles so the g28 compensator t1 flash hider and muzzle brake no one uses them anyway then the bayonet hits to execute increased up from two from one again no one uses it so so i don't think it's going to become an issue the smle pistol grip has been buffed ever so slightly this was becoming a slightly interesting one to use so hey we might say a bit more of it and then the m1915 steady has been buffed as well but again i don't think this has become gonna become meta anytime soon the mark six skeletal has had its movement speed increased and hip fire accuracy decreased to be honest that's probably a positive change overall because you don't tend to hip fire too much with that on it's more for aiming down sight and then the m3 ready grip has had vertical recoil decreased from two and a half percent down from five percent and then the bipod that's been nerfed but no one uses it polymer grip flinch resistance decreased to 50 percent from 95 percent that's pretty huge but i still think it's going to be the go-to attachment because that's not the reason people are using it they're using it for the sustained fire and then the hatched grip rubber grip lever grip granular grip and taped grip have all been buffed but again it's not something that we're going to see overly too much maybe bar the hatched grip which has recoil increase now so maybe we'll start seeing that on the high recoil weapons well guys thanks for watching the video hopefully that's given you a pretty comprehensive cover to the new warzone season 4 update and i'm going to be exploring all the new weapons in the coming update so make sure you stick around for that thanks for watching guys cheers bye